imagine a city, its heart torn apart by a wall, not just any wall, but the Berlin Wall. Picture this. The year is 1961. The world is in the throes of the Cold War, a tense standoff between the ideologies of the West and the East. Amidst this climate of uncertainty and fear arises a monolith of division, the Berlin Wall. Now, the Berlin Wall wasn't constructed overnight. It was the culmination of escalating tensions and a desperate measure by the East German government to stem the tide of citizens fleeing to the West. This wall, stretching over a hundred miles, cleaved the city of Berlin in two, dividing families, friends and loved ones, quite literally overnight. Imagine waking up one morning to find your world split in two. Your neighbor, your brother, your best friend, suddenly on the other side of a concrete barrier. The shock, the disbelief, the helplessness. It was a reality that the residents of Berlin had to grapple with every day. But the Berlin Wall was more than just a physical barrier. It became an emblem of the ideological divide that had gripped the world. On one side, the democratic West, defined by freedom and individual rights. On the other, the communist East, marked by state control and collective ideology. This wall, this stark division, became a chilling symbol of the Cold War, a silent witness to the struggle between two superpowers. The political climate of the time was a critical factor in the wall's construction. The East and the West, each backed by nuclear powers, were locked in a bitter ideological battle. The wall was a manifestation of this conflict, a physical embodiment of the tension that had been simmering beneath the surface. It stood as a grim reminder of the lengths to which nations would go to uphold their ideologies, even at the cost of human compassion and unity. The Berlin Wall, a chilling symbol of the Cold War, stood tall for 28 long years. Its shadow loomed over the city, its presence a stark reminder of the world divided. But as we'll see in the next scene, even the most formidable walls can begin to crumble. What was life like behind this wall of concrete and barbed wire? Imagine a world where freedom is an unfamiliar concept, a world where the simple act of crossing the street could be a matter of life and death. This was the reality for those living in East Berlin. Behind the formidable barrier known as the Berlin Wall, life was a stark contrast to the freedoms enjoyed by their Western neighbors. The East Berliners were under constant surveillance by the Stasi, the state security service. This was not just an occasional prying eye, but a relentless, omnipresent force that infiltrated every corner of their lives. The Stasi had nearly 200,000 unofficial informants turning neighbors against each other, friends into foes. Trust was a luxury few could afford. The restrictions didn't stop at surveillance. There were limitations on travel, on the type of work one could do, even on the kind of music one could listen to. The wall was not just a physical barrier. It was a wall that caged the human spirit, stifled creativity, and quashed dreams. Basic amenities were scarce. Food and consumer goods readily available on the other side of the wall were often rationed in the east. The contrast between the brightly lit bustling streets of West Berlin and the somber subdued atmosphere of the east was stark and palpable. Yet, in the face of such adversity, the human spirit persevered. People found ways to express themselves, to dream, to hope. They formed underground clubs, wrote clandestine literature, and dared to dream of a world beyond the wall. The wall, a symbol of division and oppression, also became a canvas for protest. It was on this concrete canvas that East Berliners expressed their yearning for freedom, their defiance against the regime, and their hope for a better future. For those trapped behind the wall, it was a life of despair and constant surveillance. But it was also a testament to the indomitable human spirit, the ability to hope and dream even in the face of the most oppressive circumstances. The winds of change began to blow in the late 1980s. Could this wall of division stand against them? As the decade of the 80s was drawing to a close, the political landscape was shifting dramatically. A new leader had emerged in the Soviet Union, a man named Mikhail Gorbachev. Unlike his predecessors, Gorbachev recognized that change was inevitable. He introduced policies of glasnost, or openness, and perestroika, or restructuring. These policies were designed to modernize the Soviet Union 
and make it more competitive on the global stage. They were also intended to address the widespread corruption and inefficiency that had plagued the country for decades, but these changes had unintended consequences. As the Soviet Union became less rigid, its satellite states began to question their place in this new world order. East Germany was one of these states. For years, the people of East Germany had lived under the oppressive regime of the Stasi, the state security service. They had watched as their freedoms were curtailed and their living standards stagnated. But as they saw the changes happening in the Soviet Union, they began to hope for a better future. Protests began to break out across the country. Initially, they were small, localized affairs. But as the months wore on, they grew in size and intensity. The people of East Germany were demanding their freedom, and they were not willing to be silenced. The government tried to suppress these protests, but it was fighting a losing battle. The people were united in their desire for change, and they were not going to back down. The pressure was mounting, and the government was running out of options. And all the while, the Berlin Wall stood as a symbol of the division and repression that the people were fighting against. But as the protests grew and the government weakened, the wall began to seem less like an insurmountable obstacle and more like a crumbling relic of a bygone era. The wall, once seemingly invincible, was now on shaky grounds. November 9th, 1989, a date etched in history. What happened on this fateful night? On this chilly autumn evening, an announcement echoed through the airwaves of East Germany. Gunter Schabowski, a government official, unintentionally declared the immediate opening of the borders. He had meant to say it would happen the next day, but his words had already set a wave of euphoria in motion. In a matter of hours, the streets of Berlin were flooded with people. East Berliners, wrapped in coats and hats against the biting cold, moved towards the checkpoints. They carried with them an air of anticipation their faces etched with disbelief. Was this a dream? Could they really cross over to the West, a place they had been barred from for so long? At first the guards were confused. They had received no orders to open the gates, but the crowd was growing, their demands echoing through the crisp night air. Eventually, the orders came through. The wall was open, and so they stepped aside, their stern faces softened by the surreal reality of the moment. A wave of jubilation swept through the crowd. People hugged, cried and cheered. They climbed atop the wall, their laughter and songs of freedom filling the night sky. They danced on the concrete symbol of division that had kept them apart for nearly three decades. Champagne bottles popped open, their contents spilling onto the graffiti-covered wall. The air was electric with joy and relief. As the night wore on, the once formidable wall was chipped away. People took pieces of it as mementos, tangible reminders of a past they were eager to leave behind. The sound of chisels against concrete was a symphony of liberation, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. In the heart of this jubilation, there was also a sense of disbelief. Could this really be happening? Were they truly free? The answer was yes. The wall had fallen, not by force, not by a decree but by the collective will of the people. That night, the Berlin Wall didn't just fall. It was brought down by the collective will of the people. The fall of the wall marked the end of an era, but what did it truly signify? This monumental event was not just a physical dismantling of concrete and barbed wire. It signified the reunification of a country torn apart by ideologies and the end of a war that had been waged not on battlefields, but in the minds and hearts of the people. As the wall came down, so too did the Iron Curtain that had divided East and West. Germany, split in two for more than four decades, began the painstaking process of reunification. Families, torn apart by the wall, were reunited. East Germans were introduced to a world of possibilities that had been kept from them. The fall of the Berlin Wall was a catalyst for change, not just in Germany, but around the world. The end of the Cold War was heralded in by this momentous event. The superpowers that had been at loggerheads for decades began to seek common ground, reshaping the global political landscape. The fall of the Berlin Wall was a turning point, a moment when the world exhaled a collective sigh of relief. It was the dawn of a new era of cooperation and diplomacy, a step away from the brink of a nuclear abyss. 
Today, pieces of the Berlin Wall can be found in museums, private collections and public spaces around the world. These fragments, once symbols of oppression, have become historical artifacts. They serve as a stark reminder of a time when the world was divided, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The fall of the Berlin Wall was more than just the end of an era. It was a symbol of hope, a beacon of freedom, a testament to the unyielding desire of people to live free. This event, etched in our collective memory, serves as a powerful reminder that no matter how formidable the obstacle, no wall can suppress the human spirit forever. The fall of the Berlin Wall, a symbol of hope, of freedom, and a reminder that no wall can suppress the human spirit forever.